This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Of course, we are back here with Marco Permunian. How are you doing, man? Good, how are you? I am doing great, thank you. Of course, I am Rafael Di Furia and today... We are here to continue our mini series about where in Italy that we would consider living or recommend people to live or at the very least purchase property. But so far we've talked about living by the lakeside, living by the seaside, living in the city. But today we wanted to talk about getting out to the country, enjoying some of that mighty fine Italian lifestyle <laughs> in the small towns and also maybe in some of the places that are a little further out than just the smaller towns. But Marco, I think a great place to begin with, like we've done so far with this episode, where would be in Italy a place that you would say is maybe in the countryside or a small town that you would find might be easier to recommend to one of your clients? or that even you would consider to live personally? Maybe we should divide that in two. First, where you would live, and then secondly, where you would uh, recommend for your clients. Well, in the end, it comes down to a personal choice. I've said that many times. Um, and I want to say that uh, in, in this specific situation where we're talking about villages, probably in, it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of uh you know prices and and lifestyle because we're talking about like small villages so i'd say there is like more of a difference between picking a major town than picking a small village where to buy a property right. or to live in and and again it comes down to a personal choice there are very famous areas in italy uh, where uh, a lot of americans uh, choose to live and uh, maybe where price is a little bit a little bit on the higher end, like the uh, Tuscan countryside where there are beautiful yeah. villages, or maybe gorgeous area. Yeah, or villages in uh, Puglia uh, where there is a large American community. But um, my personal choice is once again connected to the fact that I was born and raised in the Veneto region and I would right. probably pick a village in my region because I believe we have beautiful uh, villages and uh, by the way it's the Veneto region um, and we have beautiful uh, villages and you are very close to a lot of major cities like Venice mm -hmm. or Verona or Bologna or Padova and um it's the, the prices are not crazy uh it's an area that has a lot of history it's you know we have beautiful villas in veneto uh villas built by uh, palladio and a lot of these villas are in small uh, towns and it's just beautiful for example a very famous villa built by palladio is in Fratta Polesin. It's a town that nobody knows. And there is this super famous villa, which is absolutely gorgeous. And you can purchase a property in that town for a fraction of what you would spend if you were to buy a property in Verona, for example. But you can still enjoy these beautiful villas that are actually multiple villas in the same town. Or um, one of my favorite towns uh, near the... Um, Colli Eugane in my area, which is where we recorded a few episodes right. last year. Oh, that uh, place was amazing. And one of the towns that I really like in the area is uh, actually two towns. One is called Arqua Petrarca. It's built on a hill and it's super gorgeous. At some point, you can't even go uh, with the car anymore when you go towards the center because it's, you know, there are just little streets that you can only um, walk through and you can't really use the car, which is one of the beauties of uh, this town, by the way. Um, and it's very famous for uh, wine yards. There's a very, very famous uh, wine made in this town, red wine, Italian red wine. Um, mm. And another town that I really like in my area, it's called Montagnana. And it's basically the very center of the town is within 
uh, the walls that once uh, pertained to the castle um, that basically uh, was in the city. And once again, it's very beautiful, and the church is inside, in the very center, in the major square, um, which is huge, and uh, this square is surrounded by uh, the walls that, again, were part of the castle that no longer exists. But uh, we really have beautiful villages in my area, uh, and I would definitely recommend to look into that area, even if it's not maybe the most famous in Italy. But what about you? I know you've traveled uh, extensively in Italy, and what would you say, in your opinion, is an area that you would focus on if you had to purchase a property in, in the countryside in Italy? You know, um, that's, a, that's a tricky one for me because for me, what's very important, especially at this point in my life, is to have a very solid internet connection so that I can work. And considering some of these places out in the country, most, if not all, really don't have... Oh, granted, you can actually get into some small villages that have really fast mobile connections. So if I could do that, what I first would look for would be someplace not necessarily specifically a location, but um, a place that has easy access to a larger city so that if I need to buy a piece of equipment or I need to buy a wire or whatever it might be that I might need professionally, I would want that access. So maybe, for example, there is a um, national park area that is outside of Verona. So I might actually consider somewhere around there uh, where you have a lot of beautiful green spaces and not necessarily actually even being in a, um, a village per se, but to maybe even go a little bit further out and be in a remote location that still has access to some other areas uh, and maybe be semi off grid. Uh, as long as, of course, I can have that mobile internet connection and uh, hotspot my way around uh, my work life. Um, I think that would be, for me, something that I might consider, rather than being in a small town, just to be in a semi-remote location. You do have areas that you can go further out to that I might also consider, like, for example, in the south, um, outside of Naples, once you get up into the mountains. There are some really gorgeous, beautiful little towns out there that are, are fun little places that have that, that fun uh, Italian feeling that a lot of people associate um, with the idea of Italy that are coming from the United States, that, that, that kind of loud, family-friendly environment. But even, I think, looking in the Veneto region, I might have to agree with you that it really would probably be the place where I would also personally look, um, maybe in Lombardy, maybe. Um, other areas in the north, I can't say I would find as attractive, uh, just because, again, kind of the, 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 the location and connections to be able to get around. Um, but maybe, for example, in Molise, maybe one of those areas that's a little bit further out and maybe one of the smaller villages there where you can get access to the city there. That, I think, also would be interesting to look at. Just, again, because like I mentioned in a previous episode, the seaside episode, you have the mountains and then the water that are, all, that are not so far away from you. So you can have access to a lot of interesting different types of things without really cutting yourself off from too much. That's the most major thing that I think is important to consider when you're looking at small villages in Italy. You do have some very remote locations that are really very far out and don't have anything. Some, okay, running water, you'll find that. But you will even find parts of the country where you will have limited water. Like, for example, in Sicily, sometimes you have, will be living in an area where you'll have, um, what's it called, a cistern, I believe. Uh, or, or that you have to be careful of your water usage. So for me, personally, I would not like to live with that over my head. I've lived in places where you have to be concerned about your water usage. And, okay, granted, we should all be very careful and we all should be very mindful of how we use water, but not to the extent where we would be concerned about the water shutting off in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> um, so 
I would find maybe I would have a difficult time considering some areas in Sicily. And in the north, you do find that you have maybe some more um, connections when it comes to utilities and, and so on, even transportation. But I've been ranting on a bit here. So for you, do you think there's any part of the country that you might find difficult to consider or difficult to recommend to your clients who are thinking about maybe getting someplace out into the countryside or out into a smaller village? Since we're talking about villages, I have an area that just comes to my mind when, when I think about uh, a place that I would not recommend considering when thinking about purchasing in a small town or village in Italy. And that area would be Sardinia. Um, and I can say that because I've been there. Um, right. I've been there in winter time, which is normally uh, when nobody goes to Sardinia. Uh, Sardinia is very famous uh, in the whole world for uh, its uh, seaside and beaches. Uh, but the villages that uh, are in Sardinia, although there are some very beautiful villages, don't get me wrong, but I'd say that the percentage of villages that are more industrial uh, in the mainland is higher than other places. So I would consider purchasing in Sardinia if it's an area relatively close to the seaside uh, because you can have access to the seaside uh, easily if you're not wanting to purchase, purchase uh, right where the sea is. But I would not recommend maybe to purchase in the center of Sardinia where maybe you have to drive hours to get to the seaside and maybe there is nothing really to do or to see uh, in the town where you're living in that specific area of Sardinia. That's interesting. I'm really glad you you could clarify that and, and to be able to talk on that because in the earlier episode about being on the seaside, that was one of your, your top locations. But if we're talking specifically about villages, it's interesting that you do have to take this into consideration that maybe not all of an area is going to be ideal. Of course, this goes in any part of the world. But um, even when we're talking about on a regional level, you do have to consider that we'll, there will be places that are more ideal than others. And um, that definitely makes sense that having better access to the water would be um, more of what you would be able to easily recommend when going to those places. Are there any other parts of the country that maybe stand out to you that you would either say you really would recommend against or you really would actually positively recommend? Well, um, yes. And also because of a lot of clients ask me about that area, I think I have a lot to say, but um, I would consider Sicily a village in Sicily mm. because, man, it's just beautiful. So when you think oh, about yeah. Italy, uh, you normally think about a small village in southern Italy. And I think Sicily kind of embodies that um, uh, conception that people have of Italy. Um, yeah. And it's just a beautiful area. And every little town in Sicily is just beautiful. It's so rich of history. And yes. it makes you feel so much in Italy. Uh, the lifestyle is amazing. Uh, people take it slow. And mm -hmm. you kind of feel you are really in Italy. So a lot of my clients, they're considering uh, purchasing a property uh, in, in a Sicilian village, and we're helping a lot of people buying properties there. Yeah, I can definitely see why there's the attraction to that part of the world. I mean, I remember, or to that part of Italy, again, part of the world, but still, um, I remember being in, I believe it was called Prizzi, or somewhere not far from um, Corleone. And it was just this mountaintop village. It was unbelievable. You felt like you were walking through a movie set because everything is the cobblestone streets and buildings. And there's all they just it's organically built the way that it all comes together and everything weaves in and out from each other. And um, I mean, you even have like cafes and places to go and uh, some little things to do. Not that there's a ton going on, but. It's interesting to consider a place like that in one of those idyllic locations where you can have 
what people do think of as the Italian lifestyle and what draws people to Italy. And then on top, Sicily does happen to be another one of those regions where the food does happen to be pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. <laughs> But Marco, I have to say, this has been a really great episode. I mean, I've really been enjoying this, this little mini series that we have going on. And I think there are other aspects of Italy that we could continue to talk about where we would live or where we might recommend living. But in the meantime, for anybody who is considering to purchase property in Italy, how can they get in contact with you and your team for that idyllic lakeside? seaside, cityside, or countryside location. People can contact us through our website, italianrealestatelawyers.com, or give us a call, the number is on the website. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, if you are interested in more content like this about Italian real estate, be sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel and or the audio only podcast. But of course, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, then you are also automatically subscribed to the Italian Citizenship Podcast where Marco and I talk a bit more about some of the practical side about moving to Italy and also being able to legally reside in the country. Of course, if you're also interested in content about life abroad, living abroad, living in Italy, or living abroad as an expat dual citizen, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rafael Di Furia, or you can find my audio-only podcast, Not Your Average Globetrotter, on your favorite podcasting player of choice. Anyway, Marco Permunian, Mr. Permunian, thank you so much for making yourself available for this episode of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by italianrealestatelawyers.com. Of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there, and we will see you all next time. Later. Thank you.